Hello, and welcome to our virtual annual discipline meeting for the 2022-2023 school year. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Dane Lamont, the School Partnership Specialist for Penn Highlands Dual Enrollment Program. As we continue to adapt to a, a post-pandemic environment and adjust to new educational hurdles, we are pleased that we can provide you with an opportunity to complete our NASEP required activities in a platform where you can still make a connection to your liaison. Throughout the semester, ACE Liaison scheduled live Zoom sessions to discuss specific topics related to the disciplines in which you teach. While we understand that it is not always possible for you to attend these live sessions, these sessions were recorded so you can get the benefit of the event with the discussion from those who attended. Please enjoy the recording of your annual discipline specific activity. We hope next school year we will be able to welcome you back to our campus for an in-person event. Thank you for your continued hard work in making this program available to students. Greetings, everyone. So as per our NACEP accreditation, we are offering Zoom sessions like this one for our annual discipline specific workshops. So this session, as you can see, is recorded and we are and it counts then this virtual workshop counts towards the required yearly training attendance for ACE faculty. So this particular session will, pertains to the social sciences discipline for psych and social 100 courses. My name is Dr. Casey Crowley. I am one of the ACE liaisons for faculty teaching sociology and, and psychology courses. I teach sociology courses at Penn Highlands and I've been teaching in higher ed since 2011. Getting a little old, huh? <laughs> So let's moving on here with this session. So for this annual discipline training, I will focus on best practices to keep students engaged and maintain a learning conducive classroom environment. Of course, I'm taking into consideration the time allotted to high school bell schedules. I have examples of interactive activities, started discussion questions, wrap up what we've learned time at the end of class, and emphasize including online material supplementation, highlighting the Pearson textbook current videos and interactive charts. At the end, I will present a few practical tips for teaching in this program, and then if there was some people present, I'd open it up for questions and see your practical tips. But if you have any and you want to share them, you can always send them to me in an email at the end. I have my email address and there will be a PDF of this session for you to just click quickly if you want to on any links in this PowerPoint. But if you have any practical tips that you want to share with everyone, please send them to me in the email and then I'll get them out to everyone. Right. OK. So best practices for this past year, I've observed some of the most innovative ACE faculty. I love going in and watching you guys um, in your classroom. You have some great ideas. So I wanted to share some of that student engagement tools and practices that I observed, and of course, some that I've used. So let's start off with some of the basic tips that many of faculty I've observed are practicing checking in with your students, right? Taking that five to 10 minutes to see if there is anything they need to ask or clarify. Um, I've done a quick check in around the room, depending on the class size. Like if I only have, you know, 10 to 12 students or something, I'll go individually and give them each like, you know, 30 seconds to a minute just to see, hey, are they okay? And if they need a little bit more time to that, that's fine. And I don't do this every day, but it's kind of just a check-in, right? This helps to maintain connections with my students and builds an environment that is comfortable, very conducive to learning, right? Names are important, right? Using your students' names encourages their engagement. I've, you guys are really good with that in the, um, the ACE faculty. So names, right? Very important. Then we get into 
starter discussion questions, uh, bell ringer activities, for example, which are small assignments or mini assessments that students complete when they first enter the classroom. So that initial starter, right, the bell ringer. And it typically um, consists of questions or prompts related to the concepts currently discussed in class. So then the students started the class then with a bell ringer discussion question pertaining to their um, say their master status, right? And they uh, utilized the Google Classroom to write their response and have their peers respond. This allowed for the students, or this will allow for the students to showcase their critical thinking and ability to connect to the sociological concepts, for example, with that master status as a sociology kind of concept. And it just makes that connection for them, gets them started. And of course, then that moves on to starters, right? Instead of bell ringers, they can be called starters, which again are questions pertaining to course material for that day. It's a good way for them to focus um, attention on those concepts and give them, give you as the teacher time to take role, right? <laughs> Attendance. So moving on to when we are in the classroom, right? Another best practice that I've observed, you guys, again, amazing faculty. But you all, um, when you have interactive activities, they, and so students are engaging, right? Every classroom I've been a part of had the most success with students that are actively involved in the course material. So here are just three examples that I've encountered being um, an ACE liaison is say the graphic organizer. Most of you are familiar with this, right? Um, this example is from chapter two in the social 100 class. Um, the faculty used a graphic to organize to show examples of subculture, allowing for real life examples to be discussed in the classroom. The second one is online videos, right? They can be used to test, you know, a little air quotes there, <laughs> their knowledge on the concepts. Uh, this example is from a Psych 100 course where the faculty uh, uploaded a video connecting the memory concept and then tested their students' awareness of it. This particular video was uploaded using um, the My VR Spot. So My VR Spot is a cloud-based video and digital content management solution built specifically for K through 12 education. So right on point with that. The third one nice, right, because candy's involved, <laughs> use this piece of the candy to create a 3D image of a neuron, right? So again, Psychology 100 um, students, they had to explain their thinking and how a neuron works before eating their neuron, right? Um, and I've seen faculty also use the same idea uh, using clay or cardboard pieces, things like that. So giving that 3D hands-on kind of approach, right? So then we have um, teaching using games, right? I've had uh, the experience with you quote it, you note it, right? Whenever teaching, quizzing, per se, students on plagiarism, kind of learning that APA, because uh, both sociology and psychology and basically anything other than an English course, it's going to be using APA in a college level. So it's important for them to understand the essentials of it and having fun with it like this teaching game, right? Is a great way to have that interaction. So then moving on to just again, some best tips on here, kind of wrapping up what you've learned. So this, um, you know, the whole a slide at the end of the class that highlights the concepts and or theories being addressed to that class, just reiterating what they've seen, what, what they what they need to high, you know focus on for that time, right? This particularly is helpful if there was a lively discussion that have that may have gone down a rabbit hole, do you, you know, kind of derailed a little. And what's great about both sociology and psychology is that they are so much intertwined in our daily lives and activities. And we, and as faculty and instructors, we can, you know, use those examples, real life examples and bring them right back into the concepts. You know? So it, it can be a lot of fun. And that's 
you know, when we do have lively discussions, but then we do need to, you know, always have that, bring it back and be like, okay, so tell, you know, tell me how this connects or, you know, or you, you can make the connection yourself and then tell them like this, this is great. Now this is how, you know, this is how this would be your, say your master status or however you, you know, whatever you're thinking of the concept for that day, but it can be a lot of fun, right? So again, we begin and then uh, tell them well, how we're going to be discussing today. Here's the objectives. Then of course we go into it. And then again, we remind them at the end, that whole sandwich method. And then, uh, so this is some of the great information and resources for you guys. Because some of you, um, some of the textbook information can be, you know, new and overwhelming. And what's great about Pearson, um, they provide Revel online resources for you. So there's downloadable PowerPoints. There's, um, they have what they're calling an immersive learning experience that um, gives you that familiar and respectful course, respected course contact using media interactives and assessments. So you, you get to have um, all these resources to be able to include in your classroom, right? You have access as ACE faculty to the online Pearson Rebel resources. While your students do not, high school students do not um, have access to Rebel, you can use all the instructor resources to supplement your course. You have permission to print quizzes and tests for your um, for incorporating into your classroom. All the media interactives are available for you to use in your course. There's downloadable PowerPoints, um, Word documents that have discussions, exams, um, and quiz questions, all ready for you to go, right? The media interactives can be assessed and used online also, in or online or in your classroom. However, you can take those and um, embed them into uh, say you're using Schoology or another online platform for your school, you can incorporate that into your modules. Here is a quick little walk through of this, um, how to download instructor resources. So let's listen to this quick little walkthrough. It's like a minute and a half. Hello. This is Jay Jenkins with Pearson Education. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to access instructor resources inside of your Revel program. So if you log in to the Revel, so if you Google Pearson Revel um, or Yahoo or Bing search it, um, you will get the Pearson Revel login page and then click sign in using your Pearson information. And if you already have a course created, you'll see the course. If not, you can go to search materials and create your own course um, based on the um, textbook that you're using in the course. And then once you're inside of the Revel course, which we just click on the name of the course, on the left hand side, we'll see that there is a resources tab. And if we click resources, that will then bring us to the resources by chapter. And so you can download PowerPoints, test banks, videos, things like that, whatever is available. And if you just click on it, um, you'll just want to uh, understand where your computer is set to download programs um, that um, you download from the web. And whether it's a download folder or a documents folder or another type of file folder, um, just make note of where will download it and then you can go retrieve it and open it from there. Um, I hope this is helpful and I hope you have a great day. So pretty straightforward in that respect of clicking, downloading, that I'm sure most of you are very familiar with those concepts, but oops, <laughs> clicking too many times there. So, but the point is that it, uh, the resources are there using them um, is there, I mean, if at the bare minimum, save them, look over them, use them if you can, but they're there for you. 
here's another just a way to um, show you and some screenshots here. So um, once you click on the Word documents or zip files, you will be prompted then to download that material, right? In um, the next slides, I have a, just a couple, uh, like I said, screenshots of how um, from the digital textbook just to show you some of the great resources that are actually inside even the textbook. So not only can you download some of those PowerPoints that that video showed and things of those resources, but even inside um, the textbook, there are instructor resources. So, so let's look here. So you can, like I said over here, I have highlighted, but go to the resources and then you can have the sociology, sociology this, um, explainer videos. There's the Word documents that give you discussion questions that go along with the videos that are, are available for you. Like when you click on this Word document, they give you the hyperlink for the video, and then you can use that to embed into your course. So let's look here. Here is an example of inside the the textbook, there are current event bulletins. Um, this is an example from the sociology chapter eight on deviance. And note here that the article was published in August 2021. There are even, uh, I saw some ones that were 2022. So uh, I just didn't get a screenshot of that one. <laughs> but there, it's some of the information was even, you know, about COVID-19, like some updated information that they have. So very relevant resources, some current data that is very helpful for students to, um, again, keep those class discussions going and um, keep the, everything relevant. Right? Here goes into um, how you can use, again, this, this textbook and to make your PowerPoints and to emphasize some visuals, right? So uh, digital text allows for quick additions of visuals, charts, and pictures into your PowerPoint. So we have, uh, if you, for those of you that like to be a little tech savvy there, uh, if you hold shift and the windows key plus S, like all, like just all at the same time, you go, <laughs> hold them in, it'll actually come up and mark an area for you to um, if you want to screenshot. So that's a way for you to just screenshot a certain area, not your whole screen, just block out certain area that you want. And I show here where I'm blocking out just that little yellow highlighted area, right? And then I take it in the next slide and I post it into a new PowerPoint. And I can make it bigger, smaller. Um, of course, like any image, if you make it too big, it's going to look all blurry. But if, you know, depending on how uh, what you're trying to screenshot, but it's so easy, just a nice paste. And then, you know, literally you just paste, right click, paste it into your PowerPoint. It's very nice. It's a great way to, again, include those visuals quickly from that digital text. So moving on to including some videos some into so you can see how there's videos using the smart pearson player some topics you know, they can be a little hard to address right and um it's good then to have the videos to get the discussion questions started right so just fill to facilitate, tricky word, the discussion prior to watching the video, I have students, for example, um, answer the questions about how men and women and boys and girls should act, right? And I let my students throw out how as many gender stereotypes as possible, right? So I get the discussion going by like, how, what do you think these gender stereotypes are, right? And we kind of go over there. There are first initial thoughts of gender stereotypes, and then we watch the video. Right. And this video then presents the concepts of gender socialization, sex and gender, cisgender, transgender, non-binary. Right. So it's like a lot of like harder topics sometimes. And I know um, with your high school, these can be challenging at times. Right. So if you address this in more of the video. Right. Um, they give you the short documentary series and they have. Um, a, a nice clean narrative going, right? It's very, um, go, it sticks to the concepts. So 
the so then you can get more discussions going, right? You can have it at that personal level. They have the stories, they connect them to the concepts and it keeps it for the students to understand. So you can check out those videos. Um, I did wanna, ha I do have like one of my little practical tips for you. <laughs> um, these videos particularly can't be embedded into the PowerPoint. Um, you'll have to have a separate online window um, for the link to be uh, open up from the PowerPoint. It's just one of those Pearson um, things, the way of keeping track of it, the videos being watched so they keep it so that it has to be viewed online. Okay, it can't just be embedded, it has to be, like I said, a separate online window. Here are some examples of uh, some of their originals, the Pearson originals for sociology. This is one of the sociology examples. But again, they're very helpful in facilitating, facilitating those challenging topics that sociology um, really does highlight some of these gender, race, sexuality, things of those nature. The, the videos themselves are only, I think the shortest one is three minutes, the longest one's uh, seven. So they aren't that long. So anywhere between three to seven minutes long. So moving on to some practical tips, right? This whole idea of work smarter, not harder, right? Um, the resources provided are tools to make teaching more practical, current, and relatable for the students. So play it safe, right? And use your course textbook in, that's provided in that master syllabus. At, at the minimum, use it to get those materials uh, that you can use as a resource and supplement for your class you know, download the material early to review the content, insert those updated pictures and graphs with each, um, with each new textbook version, right? Um, you, wanna, you wanna have an image of, you know, if you're talking about media, have an image of the newest smartphone versus, you know, a little flip phone, right? We Just this it's simple things, but the students, um, if you're using visuals and they'll make that connection with things that they actually recognize and use. So check with me or, any, or whoever your liaison is or the Office of School Partnerships for assessment information each year. The uh, I know when I send out my welcome email to every, my faculty, I always make sure that I'm letting you know that there is an assessment year or not. But if your liaison did not get a chance to put that information in there, uh, I would ask them to make sure, right? Some more practical tips here. Uh, provide a hub or module of some sort for APA guides for your students. If there is some way that you can give them um, just even this website here, it, it gives like a lot of additional APA guides. It's um, if you can at least give them that information to to reach out to this website or if you can download it for yourself and 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 give them those pdfs it will help them immensely they um it is is challenging to use apa especially that first freshman year and um you know having these guides will help them for sure This one is more for um, you as the faculty, not necessarily for your students, <laughs> but just I found this to be um, super helpful for those that might not know, but you can scan documents from your cell phone, right? Uh, I have two different ways here, scanning documents from the iPhone or Android, right? And so you can see that you can use it through your notes, um, with the iPhone, you can tap, in, you know, the camera, the scan it. It'll actually scan it, and it'll it'll save it, and you can have it as like a PDF. <laughs> it's actually really nice, you know. Um, and it's a great way for you. This is helpful when sending, say, your student samples for assessments to liaisons and things like that. If you want to use your phone and you can't get to the copier, the scanner, right? Uh, and then you can just send it in an email because I'm sure most of us, if we are using an iPhone, you can even access your email that way. Android, slightly different, but you have to use a Google Drive app and you just go down through and you can add um, 
the image that you want, you scan it and take the photo of the document and adjust it, crop it, and again, save it as the document that you type that you would like. Uh, it's actually it's a little Android for those Android users. It's a little cleaner and through the app, but it's still, um, you know, iPhones, it's, it's still a great way. They're both very useful. So that I think is my last actual tip for you guys. If uh, if I had more, if you do have again uh, practical tips to share, please send them um, to me. You can send them uh, through my email, which is uh, let me put that here. So my email, which most of you <laughs> have probably met me and person or in video, right? And you have my email already, but here it is again. And I will, uh, there is going, like I said, a PDF that will be available. So you can click on any links that I had available through this PowerPoint. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see everyone for next year's ACE development session. I hope to see you guys in person for that one, right? And of course, all images and uh, resources are available upon request. If you need to um, have any of these images, I have links for them and, and resources. So again, thank you so much for watching and listening. <laughs> and I will um, see you again next year.